Alrighty, welcome back everyone. Today, we're doing a nice, easy oil change on the Mitsubishi Outlander. Uh, this one's a two liter, front wheel drive. It's probably one of the easiest oil changes you'll ever do in your life. So I thought I'd make a quick video for the people that aren't really confident with um, working on their own cars, just to show you how easy it is. Now, this is gonna be a very simple one. I'm not gonna get into the other things like cabin filters. Um, Look, we'll probably we'll show you the air filter, we'll blow that out at least. Um, and yeah, all the other things like the gearbox and that kind of stuff, I've done that in other videos. And yeah, there's no, I just want to keep this one real easy. Simple, drop the oil, new oil filter, um, top it back up, check it, and then reset the service reminder on the dash as well afterwards. So yes, let's get stuck into it. All right. First thing first, we need to get rid of this cardboardy type cover. Um, but first, I'm gonna jack it up a bit just on the toe point because I ain't that small. I need a bit of room. So, what do we got here to get this off? 10 mil bolts, one there. One there, and there's two kind of up the back on the little part. There's also some of these clips. Let me get the light. These little clips here, which all you need to do is get a flat screwdriver. I should probably even do it with my fingernail. Nope. Oh yeah, there you go. So you just need to pry the middle bit out, just like that. So they kind of look like that, and then the whole thing should just pop out like that. So obviously when you push them back in, that middle bit's got to be out. Pop them back in, push the middle in, and that's it. So there's four of them, so two each side of them as well. So let me just get this off quickly, and I'll come back to you. Uh, push that back there a bit and here we go so there's your oil filter right there super easy one of the easiest oil changes literally you ever do it's awesome how they design this right there and and your sump plug is right there so at the bottom of your sump engine sump that is so, yes, just let me get a spanner on that. I'll grab the drain pan and we'll undo that. All right, I've got my drain pan ready. 17 mil socket. Onto the sump plug. Uh, I'll just have to hold you there. And give it a bit of a, bit of a love tap. That's it, we're loose. So obviously you want to have a rag handy. There. There is an aluminium crush washer on here, so make sure it comes off with it. Um, yeah, sometimes it sticks to the sun, but you can see it. It's, it's behind the bolt there, so we're good. There. Okay, ready. There you go. Get him draining. We are going to let that drain and um, give it five, ten minutes, and then we'll be back. All right, so that's been draining for about ten minutes. I'm going to put the sump plug back in. Um, there's that little washer I was telling you about little aluminium washer crush washer you should really replace that every oil change but I'm gonna cheat and reuse it again just because I don't have one uh, pretty simple um, yeah you could use a fiber washer or anything but if you buy a Mitsubishi genuine oil filter they'll come with a new washer every time I bought one um, 
Or maybe you've had to buy it separately. But anyway, they're sticky tape to the side of the box, I find, when I buy them genuine. Um, but yeah, I got a Ryko oil filter last time and this time again. So no washer. And I'm going to reuse it again. But it'll be right. So as you can see, we've slowed down to a slow drip. Very ever slight drip. And I'm going to put the front plug back in. Hand tight for now, I can push this out of the way, give a bit of a wipe, and yes, get the 17mm back on it. Don't go crazy tight guys, just just a nice snug nip up. Um, when you start over tightening them, that's when you start stripping threads and having to have oversized, oversized sump plugs and all kinds of stuff and it's not very good. Pain in the butt. So, get this back now. Get this under the oil filter. And yeah, these are so good. Look at that, one hand. Beautiful. So just undo that. It's gonna wanna drain out a bit. I just tend to obviously leave that for a few minutes as well. Just let it drain out and then unscrew it fully. I'll get my rag handy. Pour it out. There's a part number for a Ryko filter if anyone's wondering. Z4111. Not 111. Z411. Come on, Adam. Speak properly. out the way. Let's give him a bit of a wipe. Make sure that the surface is clean. One thing to always check, which very rarely happens, but it does happen sometimes, is the rubber from your oil filter will stick to that surface there. And yeah, if you go putting another oil filter on top of that, it's gonna end up in a lot of oil leakage, which won't be good. So yeah, just double check that's gone. Yeah, we'll get out here and get the new filter. This is what we're using today. HX7, 1040 weight. And like I said, there's the Ryko part number, Z411. Now, like this whole point of this video is so people can just do it on the cheap, do a quick service on their car and not get ripped off by the mechanics. So what I do, I buy oil when it's on special, not really when I need it, just whenever it's on special. So I think you're picking these up for like 20 bucks, you know, 20, 25 bucks. This filter's 13 bucks. Um, so it's about, 30, you know, 40, $40. For $40, you can do the oil change on your car. Um, and I don't know what it would be at the mechanics, but oh, I dare say 200, 200 upwards, something like that. Um, yeah, just just for those on a bit of a budget, it's a good way of doing it. So what we want to do now, open this oil filter. Sorry, I was trying to do this one-handed. It's got plastic on it, so pull that off. Because I've wiped down the um, surface on the car, and I don't know if you can see it, but this rubber is not lubricated, so... What you normally do is you get a bit of oil on the lid, open it up, oh, sealed, you idiot. It's one of these ones, one of these annoying ones, come on. Anyway, I'll just dip my finger in there then. You want to put a bit of oil around the rubber, because as that spins, as you're tightening it, don't want it to grab and tear. So that's the whole point of that. There you go. Nice bit of oil. Happy days. Give my hand a bit of a wipe again. And we can screw him on. Apologize for my wobbly camera work. Put it 
Trader. Yep. There we go. Same thing, guys. Don't over tighten them. Don't go crazy. Just a firm, firm little nip up. And that is the oil filter on. That's the sump plug in. We are good to go to fill it up. Before you go adding your oil, just if you did jack it up, just let the jack back down. Because obviously you want your um, car sitting level. So you get the correct levels. Yeah. That's obviously your dipstick where you check it. This is where you fill it up. This one here. Comparison to the motor, right there. There you go. Nice big clean funnel right in there. Yeah, and like I said before, 1040 HX7, good oil for these engines. Also, if you're, in, if you're in super cold climates, you probably want a bit thinner. Super, super hot, maybe a bit, a bit thicker, 1540 maybe. But anyway, don't quote me, but I think, I think these are about four and a half litres. And this is a five litre container, so I'm going to stop, obviously, before the whole lot goes in. Because you can always put more in, but it's harder to take it out, so... Just keep that in mind. All right, there's probably, I don't know, just under a litre left in there. Give your dipstick a wipe first. And here's your marks. So you want to be, that's the low, the low dot there. That's the high dot, so you obviously want to be in that range, but I always try and aim for the high dot. Because your oil filter's um, empty, it's going to take a bit to fill up. So I always get it somewhere in there, and then I'll start the motor for 10-20 seconds, let the oil pump through, and then I'll worry about my final levels after I've started it. So let's see where we're at. All right, so we are pretty much smack bang in the middle of them too. So I know I'm, not, I'm gonna need a bit more anyway, so put that in there. Give it another glug. Put that back on and I'm just gonna start it and let it run for 10, 20 seconds and then worry about my final checking. Um, so obviously you can see your oil light is over there. Oh, don't need that music on. So when you start it, you obviously wanna make sure oil light goes out, which it just has. And that is more than enough to um, get the oil circulated, so we'll just turn it back off. Worry about our final checks now. Obviously every time you put a little bit in, just wait for, you know, 30 seconds before you check it because the oil has to run through the motor and settle in the pan. Alright, spot on. I don't know if you can see where we are. Just right at the top dot. Smack bang, perfect. 
Happy days. Right, oil's at a good level. Um, start it up again, let it run for a couple of minutes, make sure nothing's leaking underneath. Put your cover back on, happy days. So like I said, I'm not gonna overcomplicate this video and talk about everything else, but um, I'm actually gonna do this off camera because I just wanna keep this as very simple oil change. Um, air cleaner is in there, two clips there, pop them off. The whole thing will kinda pull apart like that. It hooks in on the bottom, your air cleaner's in there, give that a blowout. Coolant level, that one, which you can see the reservoir through there. It's obviously got marks, it's got level marks. You want that between cold and hot, or low and max, which that is. Um, it's obviously your radiator cap, if you need to add any in there, but you normally just top it up from there. Squirties, windshield wipers. For the water fill that one up that's your brake fluid obviously your max and minimum lines minimums down here so we're smack bang in the middle spot on and that's pretty much it well there's your battery if you want to have a look at it and i think most of the batteries these days you don't even top up with distilled water but yeah there's your cvt transmission to check Got to be running in park, cycle through the gears, and obviously there's cold and hot marks. But yeah, I'm digressing from getting into it too deep. But yeah, very simple oil change. Hope this helps you guys. Like I said, it's easy to do in your driveway. Do it yourself, give it a go. You save heaps of money. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I will, let's go quickly, and I'll show you how to reset the service reminder even though this one doesn't need doing so what you do here in this model this is your scroll button here for your dash so you want to push that cycle through that until you get to your spanner um, hold it in that'll flash push clear push again and that's done What's that one for? That must be for the gearbox. Get rid of that one too. Oh, that one won't let me do it. Oh, anyway, the other ones, other ones won't let me do it. But yeah, the one that says clear, that's your engine oil. Um, happy days. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the next one.